Good morning, I hope you're well. My name is Jerome, and this is Spirituality 2, the I Ching series. Today is Chapter 8. I believe 8 is one of the multiples of 64. I did a search last night on the I Ching. I just put in I Ching on YouTube. And there's quite a few videos out there, and even some playlists. But nobody has, that I've found has actually gone through the entire book to where if you wanted to, you could refer, refer to this video series. If you don't have an I Ching, you can go, what, chapter 8? You know, throw the coins, get chapter 8, and go, okay. Or just pick one at random, click. That's oftentimes these days, how I consult this oracle is I just open it, and I always get exactly what I need at that moment. It's rather amazing. It doesn't work if I try to open it and then open it again. Um, in many ways, <clears throat> when you get changing lines in the I Ching, it's indicating the future in some ways to you. It does indeed logically lay it out so that this course of events will lead to this future and here's a look so it predicts if you will the future in the changing um, honestly I'm not interested in the future I'm not trying to predict the future I don't want to necessarily take that best course, I oftentimes will be quite satisfied with the wrong course and then learning from that. So I just open it and I take whatever it opens to. Let's do it right now. Let me put my little marker. This is how I do it. I take the book and I go... Right there. And the next chapter, I believe, is decrease. Breakthrough. Resolute. So it's breakthrough resolution. Resoluteness, not resolution. It signifies, on one hand, a breakthrough after a long accumulation of tensions as a swollen river breaks its dikes or in the matter of a cloudburst. On the other hand, applied to human conditions, it refers to a time when inferior people gradually begin to disappear. Their influence is on the wane. As a result of resolute action, a change in conditions occurs, a breakthrough. The hexagram is linked with the third month, April, May. Keep in mind, this is Chinese calendar versus or the ancient Chinese calendar versus the modern Gregorian system. So yeah, what the message there to me is that, yeah, okay, breakthrough. Nobody else has put together all 64 hexagrams. That's you. You are on the right course. It's very simple. And that's the magic of it. If you don't ask it a question, if you just let it speak to you, that's the key. The key is not inserting your ego, the I, me, into the beginning of it. Carefully consider the beginning. The superior man in all things carefully considers the beginning. That's what that meant. Because in the beginning lies the evolution of everything else that is to come. So, holding together is today's chapter, chapter 8, Union. <clears throat> we have water above and the earth below. So water sinks down, the earth is in motion at the same time sinking down, so they meet in the middle. The, water, the earth is ultimately, ultimately receptive. And so the water just fills all of the hollow places and they get along really well, the earth and water. The commentary, the waters on the surface of the earth flow together wherever they can. As for example, 
in the ocean where all the rivers come together. Symbolically, this connotes holding together and the laws that regulate it. The same idea is suggested by the fact that all the lines in the hexagram except the fifth place are yielding. The yielding lines hold together because they are influenced by the strong line in the fifth place. By a strong, a man of strong will in a leading position who is their center of union. Moreover, the strong and guiding personality in turn holds together with the others, finding in them the complement of his own nature. The judgment. Holding together brings good fortune. Inquire of the oracle once again. <laughs> For the I Ching to tell you to inquire again? That's the only, only time in this entire book that it says inquire of the oracle once again. It's referring to its self or there are other oracles that harness that same logical spiritual energy and thereby can predict the future. So require, uh, uh, <clears throat> so we need to inquire of the oracle whether we possess sublimity, constancy, and perseverance. Those are some big words, huh? <laughs> sublimity, in my definition, is not placing yourself above all else, while at the same time being the center of it. I don't know how else to say that. Constancy would refer to steady one foot in front of the other, the way water is constant and it's going down into the earth, the lowest point, at the lowest point. Okay, sublimity would be that, a conscious effort to go to the lowest point. Constancy is not changing it up, not changing the rules within yourself. Having a conviction, if you will, and following through with that conviction. Despite whatever issues, problems, etc. may occur. And perhaps that's a lesson in faith. Perhaps what any, despite what anybody else says, that's constancy. And perseverance. Perseverance in this case is doing the right thing at the right time, heading for the right goal. So in holding together, we must possess sublimity, constancy, and perseverance. Then there is no blame. Those who are uncertain gradually join. Whoever comes too late meets with misfortune. What is required is that we unite with others in order that all may complement and aid one another through holding together. But such holding together calls for a central figure around whom other persons may unite. To become a center of influence holding people together is a grave matter and fraught with great responsibility. It requires greatness of spirit constancy, and strength. Therefore, let him who wishes to gather others about himself ask himself whether he is equal to the undertaking. For anyone attempting the task without a real calling for it only makes the confusion worse than if no union at all had taken place. But when there is a real rallying point, <clears throat> those who are at first hesitant or uncertain, gradually come in of their own accord. Latecomers must suffer the consequence, for in holding together the question of the right time is also important. Relationships are formed and firmly established according to definite inner laws. Common experiences strengthen these ties. 
and he who comes too late to share in these basic experiences must suffer for it. As a straggler, he finds the door locked. If a man has recognized the necessary necessity for union and does not feel strong enough to function as its sinner, it is his duty to become a member of some other organic fellowship. The image on the earth is water, the image of holding together. Thus the kings of antiquity bestowed different states as fiefs and cultivated friendly relations with the feudal lords. Water fills up all the empty places on the earth and clings fast to them. The social organization of ancient China was based on this principle of holding together of dependents and rulers. Water flows to unite with water because all parts of it are subject to the same laws. So too, human society, so too should human society hold together through a community of interests that allows each individual to feel himself a member of the whole. The central power of a social organization should see to it that every member finds that his true interest lies in holding together with it, as was the case in the paternal relationship between king and vassals in ancient China. So once again, we're talking about leadership. Once you get out of the time of youthful folly and into adulthood and learning to wait and gaining the maturity and the wisdom to have a perspective on things. Then you have conflict in the army and the army shows that you have to be efficient and be a good leader and a responsible leader and see to it that your leadership doesn't allow unjust acts to occur. And if you're successful in that, then holding together is the natural consequence of that, wherein every soldier returns to his plow, is the example the I Ching uses. And does that sound kind of communistic? I, mean, I don't know. It sounded like what they needed to do back then. And that's what this just pointed out. It's like, in ancient China, it was a different thing. You know, they thought differently than we do today. So, my name is Jerome. This is Spirituality 2. And I hope you have a good day.